Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Stranger Things season 4 moments. For this list, we're looking at the coolest, saddest, and all-around most epic moments in the fourth installment of the hit Netflix series. If you haven't watched all of season 4 yet, consider this your spoiler alert. What's your favorite season 4 moment? Share with us in the comments below. Number 10. The Sinclairs Win Big In season 4, Lucas Sinclair just wants to be cool. By getting good with these guys, I'll be in the popular crowd, and then you guys will be too. Has it ever occurred to you that we don't want to be popular? So you want to be stuck with the nerds and freaks for three more years? We are nerds and freaks! Yeah. He's on the basketball team, sporting a slick new do, and sits with his teammates at lunch. That means he's neglecting Mike, Dustin, and Dungeons and & Dragons. Of course, the championship game coincides with the club's Cult of Vecna campaign, meaning Mike and Dustin need a replacement. That's where Erica comes in. My name is Lady Applejack, and I'm a chaotic, good, half-elf rogue level 14, and I will sneak behind any monster you throw my way and stab them in the back with my poison-soaked kukri. The younger Sinclair proves herself more than worthy of being part of the Hellfire Club, seeing as she's the one who rolls the winning die that defeats Vecna. Erica's triumph is intercut with scenes of her big bro shooting the shot that wins the championship. Quick hit! We even get a rare moment of Erica being a supportive sibling towards the end of the season. Well, even though you're a bench riding loser, you're still my brother. Just the best. Number 9. Eleven's Roller Rink Revenge Stranger Things has had its fair share of jerks over the seasons. Oh my god! <laughs> I am so sorry. I hope Mr. Fibley's okay. When Eleven and the Byers family move to Lenora Hills, California, she encounters a posse of pastel-wearing cool kids that relentlessly torment her, led by the especially horrible Angela. Brought out into the center of the rink, surrounded by cackling teens and doused in milkshake, Elle is thoroughly humiliated in front of everyone at Rinkomania, including Mike. Wipeout! <laughs> she does try to take the high road and demand an apology, but when she's dismissed, Elle has her breaking point and gives us one of the most satisfying moments of the season. A roller skate to the face is pretty brutal, but just imagine what could have happened if Elle actually had her powers at the time. Number 8. Goodbye, Papa. I need you to understand. Please tell me you understand. Since season 1, Dr. Martin Brenner has been one of the show's biggest villains, though he certainly doesn't see himself that way. After he was attacked by a Demogorgon in the season 1 finale, everyone thought he was dead because who could survive that? But Papa makes a surprising return this season and goes right back to manipulating Eleven into undergoing more experiments and training. Let us work together again, you and I, daughter, and Papa. Eleven stands up to him and tries to break away from his control. Now I know the truth. It is not me. It is you. You are the monster. But when the underground lab is overrun by the military, it's Brenner who helps her escape, getting fatally wounded in the process. After taking down a helicopter, Eleven says a tearful goodbye to Papa, but she doesn't give him the final words he begs her to say. Goodbye, Papa. Number 7. Vecna's Kills Heavily inspired by horror classics like A Nightmare on Elm Street and Hellraiser, the Duffer Brothers introduced a new terrifying photo Hawkins. The first time we see him take a life, it's popular cheerleader Chrissy Cunningham. We learn Vecna's M.O. of progressively invading the minds of his victims and distorting reality. Huh? Just loosening this up for you, sweetheart. You're going to look absolutely beautiful. <laughs> he picks people suffering from repressed trauma and guilt preying on their deepest fears. Don't cry, Chrissy. It's time for your suffering to end. 
Chrissy's shockingly violent death immediately let us know that season four is much darker than previous seasons. Next is Fred Benson, Nancy's co-worker at the newspaper. Vecna uses Fred's guilt over a fatal car accident to telepathically torture him before killing him. What do you want? I want you to join me. We don't see much of Patrick McKinney's experience, but his bone-breaking death is just as horrific as the others. Number six, the tragedy of Victor Creel. Before we even meet Victor Creel, we've already heard that he's a psychopath who killed his family. But as Nancy and Robin discover, Victor is actually innocent. We're here because we believe you. And because we need your help. When they go to visit him at Penhurst Mental Hospital, he's a broken man haunted by the traumatic experience he and his family endured in what they thought was their dream home. What I tell you? Well, this is amazing. It looks like a fairy tale, a dream. He tells them the tragic story of what really happened and the demonic presence he sensed in the house. Robert Englund is most known for his villainous roles, primarily the iconic Freddy Krueger of the A Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. But the actor made Victor Creel one of the most sympathetic characters on the show. Dude, I survived. No, I assure you, I am still very much in hell. Number five, everyone's a hero. We'll take care of that now. Don't try to be cute or be a hero or something, okay? You guys are just decoys. Don't worry, you can be the hero, Steve. Absolutely, I mean, look at us. We are not heroes. The season four finale was jam-packed with scene after scene of epic fights and emotional exchanges, clocking in at almost two and a half hours. Once everyone's plans are underway, we get a series of over-the-top moments. Eleven piggybacks to reach Max and faces off with Vecna. If you touch her again, I will kill you again. Is that what you did? Did you kill me? Lucas fights a deranged, gun-wielding Jason. Back in Russia, Hopper takes out a Demogorgon with a sword, and then Murray swoops in with a flamethrower. Steve, Robin, and Nancy torch Vecna before Nancy goes into full Sarah Connor mode and starts shooting him. Eddie takes on the Demobats. Whew. Some are more victorious than others, and by the end, plenty of tears are shed. Hey, I want to die. I'm not ready. You're not going to die. Please just hang on. I want to go on. I'm not gonna... I don't want to... Number four, most metal ever. What do you say, Anderson? Are you ready for the most metal concert in the history of the world? Is that a rhetorical question? We've gotten glimpses of Eddie Munson playing guitar in the Upside Down since the season's first teaser. And in the massive season finale, we finally got to see our favorite metalhead in all his glory. Percy, this is from you. Atop the upside down version of his trailer, Eddie absolutely shreds Metallica's Master of Puppets, a perfect song for this chaotic, lightning filled sequence. What makes this moment even better is that his pal Dustin is there to cheer him on. Of course, this doesn't quite ease his devastating demise later in the finale. Eddie may have bit the dust, but at least the guitar hero went out rocking. Number three, Will opens up. Many fans have been disappointed in Will's story arc, considering he's been sidelined for the majority of the season. The show hasn't been too subtle about Will's struggle with his sexuality, and his implied feelings for Mike have been hinted at for a while. Can I show you something? But in the penultimate episode of season four, Will finally communicates his feelings to Mike. However, he says that it's Eleven who feels this way. When you're different, sometimes you feel like a mistake. But you make her feel like she's not a mistake at all, like she's better for being different. And that gives her the courage to fight on. 
for anyone who's ever felt like an outcast, it's a painfully relatable moment. And while no one else picks up on Will's emotions, Jonathan continues to be an amazing big brother, making sure Will knows that he's loved and not alone. Because you're my brother, and I love you. And there is nothing in this world, okay? Absolutely nothing that will ever change that. Noah Schnapp and Charlie Heaton deliver phenomenal performances in these heart-wrenching scenes that left viewers sobbing. Number 2. Vecna's Origin Reveal Unlike the Mind Flayer and various demo creatures, Season 4 brought us a villain who loves a monologue. I could not close off my mind and join in the madness. I could not pretend. And I realized I didn't have to. In Chapter 7, we see Eleven's repressed memory of the friendly orderly revealing his true identity as Henry Creel slash One. I could make my own rules. I could restore balance to a broken world. A predator. But for good. The sequence goes back and forth between their chat in the Rainbow Room and Nancy's tour of the evolution of Vecna. Even if you guessed the twist, you cannot deny that this was one hell of an origin story. In part two, Vecna fills in some blanks when he tells Elle how her banishment led to his discovery of an unknown realm and the creation of the Mind Flayer. I saw so many things. In one day, I found the most extraordinary thing of all. But it's this initial reveal that gave us chills, thanks in large part to the incredible Jamie Campbell Bauer. <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. My superhero, Mike professes his love to Elle. I love you on your good days. I love you on your bad days. I love you with your powers. I love you without your powers. I love you for exactly who you are. You're my superhero. Four chimes for Hawkins. The scary but oddly addictive sound of doom. <laughs> Eleven and Hopper reunite, one of the most emotional reunions of the season. I kept it open. I kept the door open three inches. Man. I never stopped believing. I know, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Jason messes with the wrong Sinclair. Erica is savage. It's just the facts. If and when you do find Lucas, Please tell him I've been covering for his ass for two days now. Each day of covering costs 10 bucks with a DPR. That's a daily percentage rate of 7.9%. Another week of this and he's buying me a goddamn Nintendo with Duck Hunt. Will senses Vecna because Will Byers just can't catch a break. I can still remember what he thinks and how he thinks. And he's not going to stop ever. Not until he's taken everything and everyone. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Running Up That Hill – Max Escapes Vecna there's no question that the most talked about Stranger Things moment since part one landed on Netflix is Max Mayfield's first brush with Vecna. You belong here with me. Uh, you're not really here. Oh, but I am Max. At her stepbrother's grave, Vecna puts Max into a trance keying into her grief and self-blame, and nearly claiming her as his next victim. What saves her is Lucas, Dustin, and Steve playing Kate Bush's Running Up That Hill, creating an opening for her to escape. Despite her immense feelings of guilt, Max fights her hardest to survive. 
It's an intense scene that resonates with people for different reasons, made even more powerful by Sadie Sink's amazing performance and the emotional weight of the iconic track. This moment alone skyrocketed the song to newfound popularity, ushering in a Kate Bush renaissance. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.